John, welcome to the fifth in a series of videos, Care and Repair of DTI Gauges with me friend Bob. In this episode, Bob is going to reassemble the John Gold DTI that he stripped last week, get it back into basically perfect working order. So anyway, Bob, there you are, carry on, mate. It wasn't bad, it was, it was just dirty, um, which happens with these things. Um, so we're going to put it together. Um, and uh, go from there, but as per usual, the camera's involved, John says, and the gremlins come out. Now, as, as you remember last time, if the movement doesn't work on its own, then it'll never work. Oh, look, aim and I'm all things and thumbs. Get the camera in. Get the pivot lined up. I apologise, it's come out. That's why it won't go in. Now, as I say, it has to move on its own. If it won't move on its own, it's pointless going any further. We'll find the screws. I'm getting some new screwdrivers. back together again just out the shot now again this now needed cleaning um, I had to measure from the top of this collar to the top of the casing when I come put the, to come to put it back together again because that collar can go anywhere on the spindle shaft but it needs to go in a position because that's the stop it won't go any further if you got it too far down you could actually make the movement go further than it's designed to do so all that's been cleaned so you, you measure that distance before you strip it yep and you put it back to the same one you yep you assemble that yep. part, yeah put all the screws back in this top screw that's screw in the top there that's that's the dot that's the stop screw which stops the spindle from dropping out basically and that's collar there that's the stop for how far it goes up when you're pushing on the spindle so now I put the movement back in. I'm off camera. What I do is remember you've got to that spring there is you've got to put tension in it. Now as I say what I do is I put the hand back on and wind it up and make sure I'm winding it the right way. By the right way that's tighten the spring. Yeah, tighten the spring. You know you're going the right way, if you let go, it should spring on its own, but it's not springing, just a little bit. <laughs> What's actually happening is the hand's, the hand's turning around, it hasn't got it on the spindle, and you turn it around, when you let go, you've got tension, but not that much. That also shares the movement's nice and free, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but it, all you want is to take any movement out the movement by pre-tension in that spring. Now, as I say, it'll only go on one way, <coughs> and that, that there, the rack, which is on the, the spindle, 
and that's opinion. No. This is trying to do it cut handedly, but I'll get there. Oh you know, all sorts all sort you'll see your problem straight away. When I put that colour on, I'll put it on upside down. The flat should be on the front, it should be there. That that flat. That's uh, that stopping you. Uh. That one's that one's turning round. So that's easy enough done. If I keep my finger on the bottom. Rest of a lie, don't know. Keep my finger on the bottom. I'll cheat. So you've held out the right distance? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Keep me, the plunger can't go any further down because my finger's stopping it. Sorry, my fans is in the way. There we go. I'll have to wind this bottle up again because I let go. It's a big spring, so I'll take about three turns. Engage it on the rack. I don't know if you're on the rack because the handle jam. Basically, you want to jam the movement up to keep the tension in the spring. Now there's two screws, which is these, these ones here with the washers. Now I to usually turn the washers round because they usually get an indent. So you want that turned tight against the rack now, that's yep. why it's not moving. That's why it's not moving. And obviously with them slotted holes you can adjust yep. you can just fit the rack on the pinion. Yep. You just rotate it ever so gently so you can get the movement to move without any harshness. Yeah. It's a bit of like change wheels on a layer, isn't it? Yep. Just enough for it. Just enough. It's enough mesh. So I need to go anti clockwise. Just a little bit more, it's a bit uh, so he wasn't doing that last week. Well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that that's right there. Yeah. So I'll tighten them screws up. So that's just the spring is now preset. The pre the spring does not matter what you do, it can't come off that rack because yes. you've engaged it onto the rack. So the, the spring's preset and you've got the, the fit of the rack to the pinion. Yep. Set. Set. Just by experience the way yeah. you yep. want to you, can, you can tell by how it feels, how you've got to push it. Um, it's a bit like, if you know yourself, your own car, uh, you've got automatic power steering. If it's not quite right, you'll feel it. Put it back together, it works. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Now we need to oil it. As I said last week, little is better than too much. Then again, I've got my pointy sticks. Thank you very much whoever sent them in. As I say, it um, doesn't look like I'm oiling anything, but I am. Now you must, may say I've missed that one. <laughs> I haven't. There's nothing in it. No. A lot of these movements, when they're put together, they're mass-produced and 
rather than drill extra holes and all this sort of, they just build them as one batch. But on another movement, that'll have uh, another wheel in it. But on this one, it doesn't. So on the back, just a bit, Bob. Sorry, on the back, bit on the rack, bit on the pivots. And a bit on that guide. Well, it's not a guide, it's the rear uh, what holds the spring, puts the spring on the tension. That's it, that's the moment oiled. Well, I've left a bit off, <laughs> getting all excited. I still have to put the hand back on and pre tension it, but. I've left the ring off for the uh, the bezel. Right now we're going to put the, the face on, um, which is this fella and this fella. Now I've shown it before on these. Very important. There's a spring. Looks like a star. Um, that acts as a holder for the dial as well as the spring so when you put the dial over the top it has two locating places so it doesn't turn around some of them sit on pins and there's one you've got to watch because it's quite easy to break the pins and um, you're stuck then right my famous way of cleaning the dial cottonwood board dial spit you just roll, roll, just roll it. The dial's not that dirty actually because I've cleaned, <laughs> I've pre-emptied John, I cleaned it down home. The, originally the dial was white, you can see where the sunlight's getting that hasn't been on it. But it's gone yellow with age. There's, there's nothing, nothing you can do, it's just the paint age and if you try and clean it, You'll take all them numbers and letters and that off. So you never use a never use a solvent. Or never it? use a solvent. Nothing what contains a solvent. Now, the way I set the timing up, it's not going to do it for us. Is it out? Take the lens out. So you've got a free hand. On the the main dial, this bit. Clean it. I've said before, if it's alright for works of art, then it's alright for DDI's. That will put a bit in, you're cleaning the other one later. Like uh -huh. Just place it in. Now, as you notice, it's got a tab there. That locates in a slot there. And that goes on to there. Right? Voila. Now, turn it over with all these little screws you've got to line up. Get my little stick, which go into there. And when I say small, John can verify this. A little. <laughs> so, not the sneeze. What are the uh, like pulling beer size? It'd be a ten or twelve beer. Twelve beer. 12 ten beer. Ten beer. Sure. They're too small for a seven. Mm. Dum, dum. Still in shot. As I say until recently, that all DDI's are bad because there's nothing in between this case and the movement really. So any muck or dust will get past. But then they go through the expense of putting a, a gasket on the back, which I can't understand. <laughs> are modern day clocks better sealed? Modern day ones, yes. Um, I think I showed you with that... Um, Mercer, yeah. the Mercer, I'm going to tell you, I won the two, 
It's actually held on now with a rubber ring. Right. So the rubber ring acts as a, a seal. So I got asked a question, how do I time the hands or make sure the hands is where they're supposed to be? I'll shift that out the shot, put this one in. Some clocks do and some clocks don't. What I have, what I call is they have a pre-tension. You've got to put a load on to bring the hands to zero. Now most of them is between what I say quarter to twelve or ten to or five to twelve. If you imagine the zero twelve o'clock. This one it's ten to, right? I know it's ten to because it's never been a bit, it's where the clock is. So on this one, we'll get the little hand, and it is little. All done be mirrors and magic. And I'll put it on. First of all, I need to see which way it rotates, right, which is that way. So, if John wants to zoom in, well, I'll lift the clock up, whatever. No, no. I'm just past the zero. Right. And we'll get the main hand. And I'll put it about there. And what I'm watching for is how far that hand moves up to the zero before it gets to the, the zero on the second hand. So I need this to come forward a bit. And that's all you need to do. Just gently, if you go past, you'd say it's gone past the zero. Zero to zero. Very good. Zero to zero. Once you set, I can push them hands down. And that little hand's moved, is it? Well, I'm not, no, I'm not in zero. Zero. And the big one is the little one. Alright, just get a pair of tweezers, tweak gently. It is fiddly, but when you get it right, you get it right. And I say the zero doesn't have to be on what I call dead centre. It'd be better if I put the thing on the bottom. Doesn't have a particular long stroke. There we go. Zero to zero. Sorry, John. Yeah, sure. So. Right, we're back there. Right, normally. Finish putting the little screws in the back. Right, sorry take the little screws out of the back. <laughs> People say, well, you've just done that way. I needed it to find out where the hands was. Now I need to put the lens back in. Now, as I took it apart, when well, the lens off out, I should say, it was extremely hard. So trying to get it in, back in, while it's in the move, while the, the, the bezel's on the movement would be hard to say the least. Again, don't just pull it off, we'll slide it off. Gently. If you pull it off, you'd pull that hand off. You can take the bezel, uh, the main, the main ring out. Doesn't matter because it's it's timed. It's got a notch. Won't go anywhere. Now you need to put these back in. Now sometimes what I've done in the past, I've uh, John's just wrecking his place. Sometimes what I've done in the past, I've warmed that up, and I've 
put that in the freezer so it shrinks but we should get away just with me and my fingers because I've, I've done that many and I should be an expert at it but as John says as soon as there's a camera involved right so a bit of persuasion and I've uh, getting the lens back in it's as simple as that it why well, it was hard as I say it's had a bat and it's not round anymore um, Line the, the lens up there, the, the main chapter ring with a groove. Some of them have a little groove, some of them's got a little pip, just like a little drill hole, really. Some of them have. Now, all you've got to do is when you put it back on, slide it over the hand. That's it. Put the screws back in. Dun, 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 dun. John says, as soon as there's a camera involved, them gremlins come out. John should know, he's been doing it long enough. Right, that's that. Put the bat on. Now, it's a lugless back. Um, some moments when you buy them, they come with two backs. Um, and say if it comes with a clamp, put the clamp back on. If it hasn't got a clamp, make a clamp. Or certainly make something to go into that hole. Because as, as I showed you before, that hole goes straight inside the movement. Top on. There we go. I certainly wouldn't do that before I've got my hands on it. Yeah, that's nice up there. So four hours to Roughly four hours ago, that. Right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I haven't even polished the lens. The lens one's polishing because the lens has got scratches in. Um, but it'll suffice the way it is um, because you can still see it. Um, but it takes, as I say, you've got to strip it, clean it, put it together, make sure everything goes together properly, take the bits again, clean it, put it back together like I've just done there now but I sort of pre-assembled it and pre-judged things um, the movement I showed you a movement last week that one or well, you think it's that one but it isn't it's actually that one that's the before and after that's the movement what I was actually showing you last week it's got no face on it that one's got its face on but that's how clean I like my movements. Nice and shiny, nice and dirty. I'm saying to John, these is like the AK-47. You can chuck sand at them and the blooming things still run. I've had, I've had movements as, not as dirty as this, being absolutely jammed solid for some, some unknown reason. And yet that's absolutely a shocking state and it works lovely. The scrap units, um, I've got no cases for them, they came in a, a job lot of stuff that I got 